praise you, Lord. We praise you, Father. You said and we believe, Father. You said and we believe. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for all your people that are here tonight, Lord, and all those that can hear the word of God tonight. Father, I just declare over each and every one of your, your people here that they have ears to hear you, hearts to receive, and the ability to put your word into action in their lives, Lord. Father, your word says and we believe, man, what an awesome song, Father. What an awesome song, Father. We, you said and we believe. And I just even go even further that sometimes when we have that little bit of not sure that we still believe. Because you said, your faithful Father, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord. And we praise you, Father. We give you all the glory this evening, Father. All of you that are here tonight, lift up your hands to receive from the Lord this evening. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives and those things that you're working on behind the scenes that we don't even know that we, that we have you working on yet, Father, for those unforeseen instances that will come about. We thank you for the victory that has already been done. We thank you for the victory at the cross, and we thank you for the miracle of our salvation, Lord. We receive what you have for us tonight, Lord, and we just give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, say amen, amen. and amen. 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 Welcome to church, everybody. Praise the Lord. Say hi to one another. High five. Short side hug, whatever makes you comfortable. Praise the Lord. Or, uncom or even uncomfortable. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise his name. Well, welcome to church, everybody. I believe everybody's having a good week thus far. Yeah. <laughs> Having a great time. Amen. Before we get into the word tonight, we got a, a couple of announcements. You guys stick around for that or no? Okay. And then we'll dismiss you in a minute. But hold on. So real quick, those of you, does anybody love children in here? Anybody loves children? Right? More than Joel? Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> How many love your own children? All right. That's a start. Amen. So if you love kids and you are interested in possibly help them grow in the Lord, I just let you guys know we're looking for a children's director. Don't let that intimidate you. We're just, we're looking for a children's director. If you love children and are interested in possibly some type of way of helping them grow in the Lord, see Joel after church. Amen? Amen. Um, there's, it's super rewarding. You know, that those of us that have, have raised kids and watched them come up and do things and they like followed your instruction. It's just an awesome thing to watch, and you can have the same benefits by watching other children grow. Um, also, uh, a reminder, water baptism is uh, Sunday is the fourth Sunday of every month. Amen. Uh, there's the details there. If you're interested in doing that on the fourth Sunday, text the words, the statement, baptize me to 801-898-1054, and they will get you the information you need. And then um, also, uh, if you feel led to give tonight, we have an offering box in the back, or you can go on the app and uh, do through TouchPay, and there's phone numbers and stuff, and uh, they'll send you all the information you need if you feel led to do that. And uh, thank you in advance for that. And, uh, and that's it. We'll get into it tonight. Youth, you are excused if you'd like to be. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How about our youth, everybody? <laughs> Tomorrow's future. Future of tomorrow, something like that. Praise the Lord. Well, for those of you that don't know me, I know there's a few faces. I, I met you out there in the front, right, Britt? And uh, this must be your mom. Mom, okay, nice to meet you. I'm Dom. Uh, I get the honor of coming up on the third Wednesday of the month to do, thank you, to do, uh, thank you for the encouragement, walking it out, amen. And I just walking out the word in my life. So it's awesome I get to share those things with you. Uh, before we get into it, let me just do a little ministry prayer because I need all the prayer I can get. <laughs> 
Father God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We praise you for this day as it is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We assume the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We take up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the wicked one and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. We also take up the garments of vengeance and the cloak of zeal. We declare that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. Lord Jesus, you stand at the door and knock, and to him who opens it to, uh, for you, you will come in and you will sup with him. We open the door to you and invite you to the establish your presence in our midst, Father. We also declare that right now every amnesic wall, barrier, blockade, stronghold, or veil that would otherwise hinder progress and get in the way is put to sleep, disengaged, disengaged, and moved out of the way in Jesus' name. Every curse, hex, vex, spell, incantation form of witchcraft, voodoo, dark art, or other form of weaponized demonic activity and reversed are reversed upon the heads of the senders sevenfold that they would know that Jesus is Lord. We declare that every human spirit, hybrid spirit, demonic spirit, synthetic spirit, or spirit child on assignment to create distraction, confusion, or the triggering of bombs, trip wires, booby traps, or other types of programming are now discovered, bound in chains in fetters of iron, and put wherever the true Lord Jesus sends them. We thank you, Holy Spirit of truth, that you are present to lead us and guide us into all truth. For you do not speak of yourself, but whatever you hear that you speak and show us things to come. We call this session very fruitful, and we thank you in the advance. We thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, for healing and breakthrough that will manifest during this time. We thank you for your word, Father. I pray that it's all of you and none of me, Father, and that I'll give it exactly what you needed me to give in answering those questions that people might have already given to you throughout the month, Father, that, those, that we'll have those answers. And we just praise you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Again, welcome everybody. I'm excited tonight. I'm excited because the Holy Spirit just knows what he's doing. Amen. It, it, and I don't say that surprisingly. Sometimes I say like, man, he really knew what was going on. Um, even up to these songs. Because like Rachel does an awesome thing here every, every month and every week. It helps all of us out. But on Wednesday she hits me up and she says, what set list? And uh, I'm going to be honest. I, I know those songs, but I didn't know the title. I didn't know the name of those songs. But I knew what I was teaching on tonight. And so I was just like, oh, set eight, I think is what it was. I said, that'll work. And uh, it really ties in because what I want to talk tonight about is two things. But if you're writing titles and writing a title to your, on your notes for the message, I like to call this one, what are you listening to? And uh, not that I've preached this before, but it's always something that I'm asking myself, man, what are you listening to? Based on, you know, the middle of the day, why am I feeling like this and why am I feeling like that? For those of you that don't know, uh, I get to see, I see people all day. I'm a barber. And uh, so I deal with a lot of different individual personalities. Um, and then, you know, I hear stuff all day. And it's, it's, it's a blessing to hear some things and be able to give some feedback and maybe give some, some, uh, some advice or, or just anything. And then, you know, I see them a month later and then they're reporting back to me about, oh, yeah, hey, man, that thing you said, it worked out or I'm waiting for someone to say, that thing you said, it didn't work out, and I'm never coming back to you again. But they had a good haircut while it didn't work out. Um, so anyways, uh, it worked out, though, because I'm, I, what are you listening to? And then these songs, we're talking about, you know, power and, and that, the, that our, our, the power of Jesus breaks what the enemy's doing in that first song. I'm, I'm kind of not verbatim, obviously, but talks about how the enemy is, you know, it doesn't have control over us when we have the power of God's word, right? And then when the other song, when, he, when she's saying, you said, I believe. I mean, it's almost like when people say, well, how does faith work? If he said it, just believe it. it it's really that simple when it comes down to it. Is it easy? I will never tell you it's easy. Believing God's word is not always easy. Sometimes it's easy when things are going great in life and you're like, wow, yeah, he said, I'd be blessed and on top. We're blessed and on top, and things are going great. But then when something happens and, you know, different circumstances, you lose a job or, you know, you're, you're retired, and then you find out that the pension fund ran out and you're no longer going to get paid, all these things can happen. And then we're like, man, I don't know if I believe. Am I really, I'm not blessed and on top no more. 
right? So these things can happen. But he said, you said, I believe. So what are you listening to? And then what are you saying? What are the things that you're saying to yourself when you're going through these things, right? I think I mentioned it last month or the month before. You know, we come out and we're like, yeah, praise the Lord. Things are great. God is good. We all have our lingo that we speak on Sundays to each other. And then we get back in the car to leave to go to, you know, everybody's taken off and we see the tank on empty. And then we're like, man, how am I going to get gas this week? When just, a, you know, a few minutes before, for the last hour and a half, we talked about faith and I'm trusting God with everything. But then, yeah, we get in the car and then we're telling ourselves something else and we're actually saying it. And so we're hearing it. So what are we listening to? And if it's myself I'm listening to, what am I saying? That's not lining up with the word of God. So the, the, the word of God, the power of Jesus only works if we use it, right? It's like, uh, it's like a tool. This pen is great, but if I don't apply the, push it to open it, it's not going to write anything. It's great in theory. It'll help me communicate. But if I don't use it correctly, I'm never going to get the message across. No pun intended. Um, I say that. Daniel asked me earlier. He's like, you don't use a laptop? I almost said, what's a laptop? <laughs> I come up, you know, just writing my notes. So um, anyways, you'll have to deal with my pages turning. But anyway, so what are you listening to and what are you allowing to come out of your face is what I was originally going to call this. But I thought that sounded kind of harsh, right? Because uh, it just sounds kind of mean. And, but yeah, we, uh, you know, in today's society and forever, we've had some kind of form of media. We have social media now. And, you know, we have the, the tweets and the YouTube and and the Facebook and the Instagram and, you know, you get a little older when you're saying the in front of everything. <laughs> How do you work the Instagram? <laughs> so you, we have all this stuff, right? We have all these media outlets that are out there. Uh, and if we're listening to everything that's out there, man, it'll drive you nuts if you allow it to. Because there's the world, right? This, the, the social media, the outlets, that's a representation of the world. And I'd venture to say that even on the ones that are Christian-based, there's still some world in there, right? Because there's still guidelines that they have to follow to be allowed to be on air, right? So I think if we can get, we can get caught up in this stuff and really getting into like, well, you know, this news thing said this and this reporter said this and this guy that I follow said this and this entertainer said this and, or this movie, man, we saw this movie and it was based off of this and, man, that could really happen or even TV shows, there's a lot of junk out there that we listen to without even realizing it. The radio on the way to work, you know. Um, I'd venture to say if it's not the word of God, it's, it's just not the word of God. Yeah. I mean, that's just really what it is. And I'm not saying that we have to be in a, in, a, in a lifestyle of where I don't listen to anything but the word of God. I'm not saying that. I mean, it's, it's obviously great if that's what you do. Um, but we have to be mindful as we're coming up, right, our maturity level. We have people that get born again now, and then we call them the babies in Christ. And yet, some of us that are trying to mentor people, maybe we're not letting them know, hey, we probably should cut out some of the stuff we're listening to until you can handle, until your spiritual life gets a little stronger to where you can shield off some of that stuff. Because social media, again, everybody's on it. There's always an opportunity. Always an opportunity. I remember a couple years ago, we were doing a, we were doing a fast and praying for some stuff, I think for this church building. And besides a a fast of, as far as abstaining from foods, um, I stayed away from the social media for 21 days. And I know you look at me and you think, there's no way, Dom, you can have a problem with social media. <laughs> because it's, it's just so easy. How do you have a problem with it? But I, I did. I was like, you know what, I'm going to stay off this thing. And I did. I stayed away for, tw for that 21-day period. And it was actually really freeing. Almost as freeing as when we're out, my wife and I are out running errands, and I realized that I left my phone at home. That is a freeing feeling. One, I don't have to get phone calls and have to answer them from clients. I own my own business, so I have to answer the phone even on a day off. But it was, but it's, it was it's just freeing. So anyways, got rid of that stuff, and that was a period of time that I had to get rid of that. Um, I say all that, though, because a lot of this stuff that we listen to, if it's not edifying, it's probably something we shouldn't be paying attention to. Edifying, if it's not building you up in the things of God, if it's not making you a better person per se. If it's not making you do better things for other people per se, then it's probably something we shouldn't hear. This is the rule of thumb. How do you feel after you hear it, <laughs> right? You hear a song and you're rocking out or whatever, but you're like, man, I really kind of feel down now. 
Or you watch a movie and you're thinking, well, it wasn't bad. There was no nudity. There was no, you know, sex in the movie. And it was, it was entertaining, but man, I probably, should, you know, I kind of had some doubts. You know, there's been times where I started watching a movie and, and I think that, I think even my wife's asked me, who started watching this? I said, I started watching it, but then all of a sudden this stuff came up that I didn't need to see. I just turned it off, you know. And, and it's unfortunate. There's a lot of content in movies that really have no artistic point. But it's the world is involved, so they want you to be hit with certain things, right? So again, if it's not edifying, if it's not building you up, if you feel worse after hearing it, we probably should get rid of it. It's just kind of common sense. It's like, well, I don't want to go there. Um, it's kind of like if you eat something and it makes you feel bad after, you probably just don't eat that anymore. You know what I mean? Um, so right now, personally, there's no greater time in my life, and I think all of our lives, than right now, um, that we have to really pay attention to what we're allowing into our ear gate. Um, I say there's no better time than right now because this is where we are we're right now, <laughs> right? I can't change what I did yesterday, but, man, I can, I can change the stuff I'm listening to right now. And uh, so, yeah, so what am I listening to right now? What, what is, what's making me feel better? And it's not always about feeling good, but just what, what's not allowing me to be down, right? If you hear something that makes you feel depressed, that's not from, the, that's not from God. He doesn't want us to feel depressed. Stop listening to those things. Do I allow myself to, uh, do I allow myself to believe what the world says about me or the conditions that I live in? We find these things. We know the church answer is like, no, we don't do that. But we find ourselves in these situations. Maybe it's just me. Okay, I'm going to say it. I find myself in a situation where I can hear something enough and start thinking, man, yeah, the economy is this. Or, man, the leadership is this. Or this is that and this is that. And all of a sudden you're just, man, the world sucks. Why am I even here? I mean, that's how, that's how these things start. And then the, then the enemy takes that and wants to build on that. Yeah, why are you here? And adds to that. And then maybe you'd be better off if you weren't here. You can see how that, it's just a slow build. It happens, right? What am I allowing myself to believe? I don't have to believe everything you, I hear. I think, I think we get caught up in that. Um, or the conditions I live in. Just because it looks a certain way does not mean that that has to be that way for you, right? Um, the world will have you believe that it has your best interest, right? You look at commercials. I mean, whoever came up with advertising, that's, uh, they deserve the money they make. <laughs> I literally, I heard a comic say it too, and I thought, I feel the same way. I'll watch a commercial, and I'm like, yeah, I, know. I think I need that. <laughs> yeah, babe, we need this. She's like, no, we don't. You don't need a razor like that. You don't even shave, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> Right? So, like, the world will have you think it's got your best interests. It'll tell you how to dress. It'll tell you where to go, how to get there, where to eat, what to eat, how to eat it, what to order. It tells you all of this because I think by, I think mo most people don't want to have to think for themselves. They really don't. Where should we go? I mean, I do it every time we go to a restaurant. When my wife and I go to a restaurant, and we've never been there, and Waiter or waitress comes up, you know, are you ready? I'm like, well, what do you like? What do you think is good here? I'll order that. And then I usually follow it up with, if I don't like it, I'm going to throw it on the floor. <laughs> and, and then they look at me like, they look at her, is he serious? Uh, yeah, they'll tell you how to dress. We see it all the time in the magazines and commercials for clothing, man. They tell you this is what's, this is what's new. This is what you should be wearing. Dom, I like what I wear. Leave me alone. I care if I get my clothes at Costco. But I want to ask you, what does the Bible say? What does the word of God say for your life? You don't have to answer out loud, but if you're not sure, that's one answer. And I, I'm always that way. I'm like, I don't know what it says. i got to go find this thing. And just a quick disclaimer before I really get into the nugget of what I want to share. Gosh, I better move along. I'm not one, and I think at Bridge Church, we've said it plenty of times from up here, we're not the name it and claim it people. We're not, gonna, we're not one of those go out and name it and claim it kind of thing. But I am going to tell you that whatever God's word says, that you can say and claim that for yourself. Yes. This is the word of God that he has written for us to live by. I can name this and claim this. Amen. 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 I think it, uh, Romans 4.17 gets taken out of context. You know, the, 
call those things that are not as though they were. And I think people kind of flip that and change it however they want, realizing I'm going to call those things that are not happening like the Word says as though they're going to because I'm going to put the Word of God on it, right? Uh, so I'm speaking about what the Bible has to say. Let's talk about, oh, real quick also, then will kind of lead into this thing. So this last week I had an awesome opportunity. I'll share with Rachel earlier that this message, I started writing this message right after the last one last month. Um, and if you didn't catch that, you can go to YouTube and watch all of our messages and put a like and like them. And thank you guys on YouTube that are watching this week. And, uh, but I was, uh, I was telling Rachel that uh, I started writing this message and then it kind of came up like where this last week I had an opportunity to lose my mind. And I did. I flipped out. Had a situation happen in our, in our life. And everything's great. Everything's great at the Garcia household. Everything's back to, back to God's word. But um, I did. I, lo I lost it for a minute. And when I say I lost my mind, it's not like I got crazy and I had to be committed or anything. I just, <laughs> losing the mind just means I took myself out of what the way God would want me to think. Okay? Um, and uh, I did. I, I said things I shouldn't have said. I reacted the way I shouldn't have reacted. It gave me a great opportunity to apologize to my kids again. Like I always get an opportunity all the time to say I'm sorry for what I did and I shouldn't have done that and I should have been a master of my emotions and all these things that I go through every time I lose it. Um, and, and I do, I lose it and I'm thankful I have Jesus. And, uh, but anyway, so I was telling Rachel, I said, yeah, I was writing this message and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, you wanna write about this? I'll give you an opportunity to work this out in your life. <laughs> and so the opportunity came where I had all this and then I had to start realizing, okay, what am I listening to? Am I going to keep listening to the way I'm talking right now or am I going to change my thought process and start working the word of God in my life and start speaking the word? So after staying up all night, we had this incident happen last week, and after staying up all night, losing, I couldn't, I, I'll say losing sleep, it doesn't even really, isn't really what it means because I wasn't sleeping. So it wasn't like I was sleeping and then losing it. I was not getting sleep. And most of the night I kept thinking, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to fix this? What can I do about this? How could I make this situation better? How could I fix this for my family? How could I have missed what happened? And then it was about 4.30 in the morning I said, Lord, I don't know how I did it. <sighs> wow, Lord, how, how can you do it? Wait a minute, man. It's I. <sighs> I can't do anything. Lord, how, Lord, I need you. I need you to fix m me. Even if the situation doesn't get fixed, Lord, how can, I, how can you fix me d for this thing and so I could be, I can show my family how we're going to get through this small moment of time. And uh, I remember looking at the clock and it was 4.30 and uh, all of a sudden I felt this peace, man. I felt this peace because God said, oh, okay, you took I out of it. And you got reminded that you need me to help fix your situations. That's what I'm here for. I'm your father. Like you're the father of your children to, to fix their, to help them. I'm your father. So when I realized that I couldn't do it, I said, Father, what do I need to do? And all of a sudden he gave me this great piece. John 14, 25, 27. Man, it's going by fast. If we could pull that up. John 14, uh, verse 25 says, these things I have spoken to you while, you, while being present with you at 430 in the morning. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Leave that up for a minute. He said, he said peace I leave with you. My peace, not as the world gives. Remember, I start off saying that. What are we listening to? The word of God, or are we listening to what the world does? The world wants to tell us that it has our best interest, right? Go back one more slide. Go back to verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, how can you help me? Whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance. And then I remembered, man, I got the word of God. I could speak into my own life. This is all happening at 4.30 in the morning. I wasn't sleeping anyways. Nothing is worth more than peace. All of a sudden, I'm see, I had this peace. Next thing I know, I was waking up at like 6 o'clock like I normally do. I was like, wow, okay, I got some sleep. Man, if I would have just asked at 10 when I flipped out, 
Lord, how could you help me? I would have slept all night, except for my dogs waking us up to go out. <laughs> Nothing's worth more than peace, man. My, my, our pastor in California always says it, man. I'd rather have, a million, I'd rather have peace than a million dollars. And, and I really believe that. Every year I get older and I think, man, I just need, I just want peace in my life because there's so much craziness. Moving on. I remember growing up in the 80s and 90s and, uh, and you know, not allowing anybody, especially adults, because we didn't trust anybody. When I, was, when I was younger and maybe people remember, we used to see billboards and it said, don't trust anybody over 30. <laughs> right? And then, and then I got over 30 and I saw the billboards, don't trust anybody under 30. But, uh, as, you know, growing up, we didn't want anybody to label me. I didn't want nobody to tell me who I was. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my way. I'm going to be my own guy. I'm going to make my own thing, right? And then I remember things didn't change because then we had our kids and our oldest coming up through elementary school. And because his thought process was different than everybody else's, teachers wanted to put a label on him. And we wouldn't allow it. We're like, no, you're not going to tell me what you think my child is because he thinks differently than you. Right? They wanted to put a label on them. All because, whatever. We have a culture today that wants to put labels on us and tell us how we're supposed to be. They want to change what the label that God has given us naturally and change it. And people are allowing it because they don't know who God says they are. They don't get into the word for themselves and they don't know who God says they are. So they're going to believe what the world says because they believe, like I said earlier, that the world has your best interest. And the world doesn't. They believe that they can be whatever they want other than what God designed them to be and they, and they go for it. But what label has God given us? The label he's given us is that we're his, that we're joint heirs with Jesus. Amen. Romans eight seventeen says, and if children, which we are, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. This means that we have everything that God has given Jesus, right? What he has promised Jesus, we're joint heirs. Our label now is sonship. If I had a name badge, it'd say Dominic and then underneath title, son, king, prince, heir. God forbid I ever have to work for a, a, a paycheck again and have to wear a name tag because I'm really spoiled and get to work for myself. But if I ever have to wear a name tag again and underneath it, and they ask me what, what I want underneath, it's going to say heir because I'm an heir to the throne. I'm an heir to what God has. We are joint heirs with him. That's the label that we need to recognize. We're not what the world says, but we are what he says, right? Whew. Okay. Another example of what the world wants to do, you guys remember David and Goliath, right? Little guy, big guy. Us, world. That's my representation. This is, I love this story because this is how I received it when I first really got into detail and studied this out years ago. It's always stuck with me that I was a representation of David, that, that I was, that was going to be the little guy, that I was going to be the guy that wasn't going to be good enough, in my opinion. And then an opportunity comes when the world wants to come and show you who it really is. So again, this is a, a representation of how intimidating the world can be or what the enemy tries to do to us, tries to get us to conform. So David, it's uh, starting, yeah, uh, 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 7. It says, now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at, at Soko, which belongs to Judah. They encamped between Soko and Azekah in Ephes Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up a battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with the valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. It's over nine feet. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he, was, and he had bronze armor on his legs and, bro, and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels and a shield bearer went before him. 
here's the world that's, this is an example of how big and how intimidating the world could be if we don't know our God. If we don't know what the word says about us and the label that we've already been given when we were formed in our mother's womb, this is how big the world could be and unpenetrable, carrying a big sword, over nine feet tall, wearing a chain of mail, right? Go on to verse 23. Then as he talked with them, there was a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Here's David. He's like, he's like, so wait, what's going on here? If you want to do a little study on your own to figure out how he knew he was uncircumcised, have at it. <laughs> um, amen. So here's David. He's like, wait, what's going on, man? Some of this dude's talking all this mess. What's going on here? Verse 31. I keep skipping here to try to get to my point here. Verse 31. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. See, so David, before I go on, David's all talking about, I can do this kind of thing, right? Let's give you a quick jump here. He says, now when the words, uh, so, uh, yeah, so then David said, let no man, wait, go back one, I'm sorry. So then David said, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Oh, wait, did I go too far? Go back to 31, I'm sorry. Now when the words which David spoke were heard and reported them to Saul, he sent for him. Saul sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and the uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to him, go and the Lord be with you. Here's David saying, I know who my God is, man. I know what he's already done for me. And if he's done it before, he'll do it again. Amen. David knew who his God was because he spent time with his God, right? What an ideal job to be a shepherd, man. You're out with nobody. You just got some animals you got to watch and keep. You don't got nobody bugging you. And you got nothing but time to spend with the Lord. So David knew who he was. He knew what he was about. He wasn't going to let the enemy come and take what he knew God, uh, what he already knew of God, right? Verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Go back to verse 38. He says, so Saul clothed David. The world will try to tell us what we need to put on in order to survive. The world's going to tell us that we need this. Oh, no, you need that. Even though we don't even know what it is and we don't know how it works because we haven't had an opportunity to test it out. That's what the world, because, again, the world thinks it has, it wants you to think that it has your best interest. The world says, no, put this on, use this, and this will help you defeat the enemy. Verse 39. David took all that stuff and he's like... I can't use this stuff. I don't know what this is. I know what this is, right? I know what the word is. I know who God is, but I don't know what this is. So David took that stuff off. He shook off what the world was trying to put on him. It was a hindrance. How many people walking around believing what the wor world says, but yet they're, it's a hindrance? They're no further than they were before. 
And then we know the rest of the story. David goes on to defeat Goliath with one stone. Right? He picked up five, but he only needed one. I think it's amazing that if he would have went this route, I don't think he would have defeated him. Because he, first of all, he didn't know how to use that sword. Or he couldn't lift this. All this stuff was too much. David said, all I need is what God is going to provide for me, not what, what the world is going to provide for me. Amen. We have to remember that. You have to remember what God is telling you. I have your best interest. Stop listening to what the world thinks you should have. Listen to what I say. What are you going to choose? You're going to choose to listen to the world or the word? This leads me to my next scripture, man. Romans 8 and 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I love this scripture, man. It took me a while to grasp it. What do you mean I'm more than a conqueror, Lord? What do you mean I'm more than a conqueror? And then I was reminded of all the stuff I have gone through in my life. Even before Jesus. I have went through this, I've gone through that, I've gone through that, and I've survived and I've survived. I've not just conquered one thing, but I've done more than that one thing. I'm more than just a conqueror, man. I'm a survivor. I'm a man of God that listens to his word. I'm also a man of God that forgets what his word says, but then yet I'm quickly reminded because of the relationship with the Holy Spirit, like I said in the other scripture, that he was brought back to his remembrance, right, of everything that was taught to you. I am more than a conqueror. The enemy, the enemy is also a conqueror, right? But if we don't stick to what God says and say what God says over our own lives, the enemy will continue to be more than a conqueror also. But he doesn't win. Don't you guys know? I mean, we have the victory. It says in the back of the book, we win. We're more than conquerors. Because of God's love for us, we're more than conquerors. Because of God's love for you, for me, we can say this and know it with confidence because of his love for us. When it's hard, I am more than a conqueror. When there's chaos, like I went through last week, I have peace. When I think something's not fair, I'm a joint heir with Christ, man. These are things that we have to say over ourselves. Again, I'm not a name it and claim it guy. I'm going to say things that in the world I can have. I'm going to say what God says I can have. He says I can have peace. He says that I'm more than a conqueror. And he says that I'm a joint heir. These are just three examples of hundreds of scriptures in here. Remember I said I lost my mind, right? Well, then I was remembering that, um, that how could I lose my mind when I've declared so many times over my own life that I have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16. For, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Does that mean I'm going to think the things I'm supposed to think all the time? No. But it does mean that when I get out of it and I find myself in that chaos or I find myself losing it, man, God, you said I have the mind of Christ. So These are all things I was going through at that in, in, up until 4.30 in the morning or after I started thinking, right before I fell asleep, right? Man, you said I have this, I have this. And I started having to speak this stuff over myself. I decided that I was going to listen to God's word as opposed to what I thought the world could tell me how to do something, how to fix a problem. I have the mind of Christ, so I shouldn't be losing it. But when I do, praise God, I have, we have Jesus to bring back to our remembrance that we have the mind of Christ, right? So going all through that, I, like I said, I lost sleep, man. And uh, I lost sleep because I was staying in my own mind. As soon as I made that confession, man, I was able to just go right to sleep. The world has a solution for everything. Everything that we, everything that can happen to us, the world wants to, or the world thinks it has a solution, but there's no solution that's better than what Jesus has for us, and that's His Word. I know we live in a time where everything is now, right? Amazon Prime, Amazon t the Today. I always went to order something. It said if I spent twenty-five dollars or more, I can get it today. I'm like, how do I get it today? Why, why can't I just buy this and get it today? I don't, why do I got to spend more? But I was, I'm just amazed. You know, I hear people complaining, man, Amazon messed up my order. It took four days instead of three. Bummer. <laughs> man. Right? I, I was telling Rachel, she shared something with us earlier. I said, why don't you just go to Target? <laughs> it was there. 
We have Amazon Prime. We have streaming devices. Who hates commercials? I didn't know I hated commercials until streaming devices came out. Then I was like, why are we watching commercials? It didn't make sense. Right? We have, uh, you know, microwaves. That's been around for a minute. Uh, talk about feeling old. I had a client a while back. I said, I remember when we got a microwave. He's all, that didn't come with your house? <laughs> no, man. Nothing came with the house. <laughs> He's all, really? I said, yeah, I was, I'm old enough to remember when we got a microwave. Coolest thing ever. Um, you know, we got a Google search. It's immediately. You don't even have to finish a word. You just put in a thought. You can just say it out loud and then type the first letter of that thought, and the phone that doesn't hear you will pop it up. Right? We have a problem, though, because of that mentality. We see it on the streets, too. Everybody's driving super fast, racing to the next stop sign. I got to be there. Because nobody wants to wait on anything. And nobody really, and, and that is, is, is also, nobody wants to wait on the Lord. Because we want it right now. Lord, what do I, what does the Bible say? Pastor, what's the Bible say? And because he's awesome, he's like, what does the word say? What does the scripture say, Right? we got to find it for ourselves. But, man, we don't want to wait on what God has because we want to fix everything right now. We want it all, blah, 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 blah. And it can't happen like that. I mean, it can, but only in God's timing. Remember when Aaron didn't want to wait on the Lord? Moses went up to the mountain, right? He's gone up there 40 days, and Aaron and all the people were, like, freaking out because they didn't want to wait on what God was doing. And they're like, man, we need an idol. We need this and we need that. And he's like, all right, cool, let's give me all your gold. Me, I would have been like, give me all your gold, and I would have left. No, I'm just kidding. He said, give me all your gold, and we'll make a golden calf, and that'll be it because you, we can't wear it. He's taking too long. How many of us said that? God, you're taking too long. You're taking too long, man. And he's like, wait on me. He shows us that example of what happens when you don't wait on the Lord. You get a golden calf, and you get a, an idol, which we're not supposed to have. That's an exodus 32, chapter 7, or verse 7. And the Lord said to Moses, go get down for your people who have brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves because they don't want to wait. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molding calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, this is your God, O Israel, that you brought out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. They didn't want to wait on God. A lot of times we don't want to wait. But God has a system. He has a process. How about, this is another good scripture, another good thing to speak into your life, what you should be listening to. How about when the world tries to bring up your past and wants to tell you the lies, and wants to tell you lies, new lies now to bring up what you already went through and tell you that you're still that person that you were when you know you're not, but it wants to bring up those things. It's easy to remember that stuff. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now all things are of God. All things are new. I'm a new creation. If I've given that up and I'm born again and I'm a new creation, I can't go back to that guy. Right? And if I do, praise God, we have Jesus and we can get in right standing. But when I think about a new creation, it might be silly, right? This is a weird explanation. Uh, you know, we've all drank sodas out of aluminum cans. I'm assuming most of us have. If you haven't, awesome. <laughs> but aluminum gets recycled. Plastic gets recycled and then it later becomes a new creation. We see, plastic, we see aluminum get recycled into plastic or that gets recycled and becomes a carpet. Or aluminum gets recycled and becomes a new creation as in a car door or, a, or a, bo a body part on a new car. I've never once seen a car get hit and boom, pop into a dozen Coke cans. Picture that, right? Imagine. And then if they're full, how cool that would be. What I'm getting at is it, be, it went from an old thing to a new creation. And when chaos hit it, it didn't go back to the old thing because it was created new. So what I say to us, and I'm wrapping it up, I promise, Pastor. We have become new. 
we have scripture after scripture that we can rely on to speak into our lives, to remind us of who we are, the label that God has created us to be. So when we get hit, when we get T-boned with the things of life, we don't go back to the soda can. We can restay the new creation because we're in Christ. There's a, there's a ton. I have, I have this thing, these 90 statements. There's more than that. But I like to call them the in him truths, who I am in Christ. And I verbally have to say these things out loud. I have to say them out loud. I have them taped on my desk. I have to say them. When there's something going on, I'm like, wait, I'm feeling this way. What did it say? Oh, no, I'm more than a conqueror. I can figure that out. Wait. Oh, uh, I have the mind of Christ. Oh, wait. I'm a new creation. Oh, wait. I am healed. Oh, wait. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed and on top. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthen me. You have to have these things. If they're not on the ready, we have them in a book. Print. You don't need a laptop, Daniel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I say all that, and, and again, what are we listening to? If you're going to listen to anything, listen to what God says about you and not what the world wants you to hear. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you, Father, for this opportunity to speak your word into your people to speak your word back into myself, Lord. I thank you for all things, Father, being new in you, Jesus. Father, we just give you praise today. I believe that most of us are, are all uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, but if by chance you're not, we never want to miss an opportunity. And uh, so I just want to give you an opportunity to, to uh, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, we're going to all pray in a minute, but if you have not made him your Lord and Savior, these scriptures seem foreign because you don't know him that way, and you want to receive him as your Lord, raise your hand. Nobody's looking around, just everybody with your head down, and if you need to receive him, raise your, your hand, and uh, we'll make sure that we direct our prayer to you, and we can pray individually as well. Um, if you know the Lord, and yet, you know, again, you've fallen fallen back and not really have relied on God's word and you have not spoke this into your life and uh, you need to rededicate yourself back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm back and I'm ready to hear your word. Again, this prayer is for you too. We're going to pray in a minute. You just raise your hand. If you need prayer for anything else also, you know, uh, we're here. I can pray. We have Luke can pray. If you need any prayer for healing or anything you're believing God for, raise your hand and we'll get that done before we finish out tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So just pray this prayer after me. Repeat after me. And uh, Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Uh, position yourself in my life and help me to walk in your footsteps. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Father God, I thank you for this time tonight, Lord. I thank you for your people. Thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. We thank you for the word tonight, Father. And we just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, church. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for letting me be up here once again. I hope you, hope you heard something that you wanted to, needed to hear. In Jesus' name.